Behold, in front of you, you have this really large number. It's into billions. Have you ever counted this high? Of course not, but you understand the number because you understand place value. Now, what is the largest number used there? It's a nine. In Mortensen math, in base 10, we say you never count past nine. When you have nine and you get one more, you get the next largest kind. Let's do that with our units. Picking them up, let's put them in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we never count past nine because what happens if I were to put one there, it would be just the same as 10. When we have nine and we get one more, right here, one more, we have one of the next larger kind. We have 110. We can do that same thing with our tens. Let's drop these out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And what happens if I put one more in? That's just the same as 100. We never count past nine because when we have nine and we add one more, that gives us the next largest kind. In this case, 100. Let's use our tray and do something else. Now again, I'm starting out with it empty. With the younger children, it's nice to start out with it empty. That way there aren't a lot of distractions. I've put a seven in. Can we build a seven with a six and something else? Can you find the piece that will go with a six to build seven? Of course, it's a one. And the tray is self-correcting. It's so easy for the child to succeed. Can you build a seven with a five and something else? Right, a five, and what will go here? A two. Now, can you find a four? And what can we put with four to build seven? A three. Well, what if we start out with a three? What would we put with a three? The four. Now let's try a two. What could we put with a two? That won't work. And you know what's going to happen? The child may pick it up and start to put it there, but immediately it's very obvious. It's visually obvious. This doesn't fit. They get it close. They put it away. They've corrected themselves. Now, they can build a seven with a two and a five. And what if we started out with a one? What would we use? Let's see. I bet this will work this time. It does. Notice that here, the child sees a six and a one, a one and a six. Both of them give them seven. Very important concepts for children to understand. If they have the experience first, then later, when we attach fancy names such as the commutative property to that, it's going to mean a lot to them. Think about learning just about anything. I've done workshops where I talked to people before I ever went to that workshop. I was very familiar with their names. And in spite of the fact that there were 40 or 50 people at the workshop, it was very easy for me to call them by their name after just a few minutes because I could attach the name that I had heard over and over again with that face. It's a lot different from walking into a workshop and not having ever met anyone before or having it, not ever having heard their name. When we know something, then just adding a little bit more makes it easier. Also notice that I used the word build. We can build a seven with a six and a one. That's a child's language. After you say that, then you can add those words plus and equals. Note two. 
Let me write this. What does equals mean? Equals means the same as. Does this look the same? Now, be honest. Imagine being a young child. Does this look the same? No. But let's put the bars there. Here's a four. Here's a five. And here's a nine. Are they the same? Well, if we push them together, the child can see that it's the same quantity, it's the same length as, that these are the same. And you know what typically happens even before that? Children working with the blocks will discover that if they put a two with a three, that's always five. Always. It's pretty powerful when the child makes that discovery. Right now, it seems minor test, but take the time and think. That's very powerful for the child. Now, you've played some games with addition facts, and I just gave you a sample, and I recommend that you look in your games and activities manual and find some other things. And let that games and activities manual be a starting point for your imagination. Here we have addition facts mastery. Let's look at it. Here, we have a one with a one. One plus one gives us two. Here we have a one put together with a two. One plus two gives us three. Let's look at what the child is going to see. I'm looking at page three now. Here, we have a three. The child will fill in the three with a one. And the answer's already filled in there. It's a four. Here, we see a two bar that we're going to get put together with a two bar. Now, what's going to happen when the child gets out a two and a two? Have them do that. Here's a two bar and another two bar. And a two bar and a two bar is the same as a four bar. And if they need to do that, have them do that. You see how they're going to have a lot of fun just filling in those problems. Now, if you look at page seven, here is a sample of some missing add-ins. What do I add to two to get four? Well, here's a four. Here's a two. What do I put with that two to get four? Well, it must be a two. And below it, we have something that we put with a two to get a five. Here's our five. Here's our two. And what do we put with that? We put a three. So three plus two is the same as five. Notice that the missing number changes position. Sometimes it's over here on the right. Sometimes it's on the left, and sometimes it's in the middle. This is very important. Children will see problems like this on standardized tests. But aside from the standardized test, it really makes sure that they understand the concept of addition and that they think of the equal sign as meaning the same as. I hope you see that the child could be working in the smiley face books and working on their place value in the counting books. and also beginning to work in the addition facts mastery, especially if they have those writing skills.